All right, Buenos Dias. Um, I want to read this comment and then uh, answer this comment. And uh, to me, it's very interesting. I'm very glad that somebody asked this question. And I want to further this conversation. I think it's very interesting and, and very important as well. I think that's IP4934. Okay. He says, Dear Jimmy, don't stop studying this topic as there is more here that you are missing. And I want to kindly and lovingly challenge your teaching and say, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. Okay, so uh, that's pretty close. It's chapter 5. Okay, that's all right. No big deal. Just for clarity, chapter 5. Starting at verse 6, therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Now, I appreciate the, the challenge here, okay? I appreciate it. And now let me continue reading, okay? Without question, Paul's first choice is, of course, that the Lord Jesus would come before He dies and overclothe his body with eternal life. That is your first choice also, Jimmy, and mine also. And every true believer in Jesus Christ, but Paul does say that if we die, it is better. Amen. Okay, well, no, he doesn't. He doesn't say that at all, but I'll continue. His third choice is stay here and work. His second choice is to go and be with Jesus without his body. Uh, that's not in the Bible. Okay. His first choice is come Lord Jesus and give me a new body so that I never have to be bodiless. Uh, okay, that's kind of a that's a little bit ridiculous, but okay. You are born again, Jimmy? Question mark. The Holy Spirit is in you and has given you the same power that is in Jesus Christ when he was resurrected the life of the Son in you death will never ever separate us from Jesus Christ we are his in life and death always okay alright so again thank you I appreciate this I want people to, you don't have to be lovingly kindly you can be harsh and mean and cruel I don't care all I want is the truth alright now if you're really skilled at uh, presenting your point of views that's fantastic but just don't be afraid to challenge what others are teaching, um, what I'm teaching, don't be afraid to challenge me. I, I, but this is how we make one another sharper. Okay? Not with the fluffy stuff, but with the hard stuff. Alright, so now, I also want to encourage you to challenge yourself. Okay? Because what I'm seeing is a lot of people are trusting in what men say and not trusting in what God says. And there seems to be a contradiction here, in particular in this particular teaching. This idea that it's better to be dead, that's not from the Bible. 
I have to believe that you got that from some man and you're trying to use this mentality to justify the teaching. There's nowhere in 2 Corinthians 5 or anywhere in the Bible that suggests it's better to be dead than alive unless of course you're talking about unsaved people all right now <laughs> I don't want to go in that direction all right but first of all let me point out something here to sort of um, I apologize my <laughs> this is unbelievable this is unbelievable okay so forget all that I don't know why Bible Gateway is not working so let me let me just do this by memory okay all right so we worship a God of the living not a God of the dead all right we worship a God of the living now we want we that are saved want life we don't want death and you got to be out of your mind to read that to read this and to suggest Paul is saying that he would wish he was dead that's that's not even remotely close okay so I'm challenging you on your you challenging me now let me make it very clear here when it says here let's go first one here uh, therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord now this is speaking about being in the flesh we see this teaching all throughout first Corinthians second Corinthians all throughout the New Testament the difference between the flesh and the spirit go back to uh, John chapter 3 when Jesus talks about that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit and Paul takes that and he he, he just elaborates more on it I mean it's it's not just in this chapter it's all throughout first Corinthians uh, it's all throughout everything Paul teaches it's all throughout the New Testament the difference between the flesh and the spirit and here the wording is the body okay and present with the Lord is spirit all right this is not a new teaching this is an echoing of the same teaching that we see all throughout the New Testament okay therefore if you read this knowing that it makes sense therefore we are always confident knowing that while we are at home while we're in our, our fleshly attending to our fleshly desires we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord in the spirit as opposed to in the flesh now you know the Bible verse that says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him so again this reaffirms uh, reassures us that we are saved sealed secured sanctified forever all right and whether we're in the spirit or whether we're in the flesh we can never lose our salvation 
All right. And so uh, I got this uh, verse 10 highlighted. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Again, this is very simple stuff here. Good if we're saved. Bad if we're not saved. All right. Good if we have the Spirit of God in us. If we are born of God. Bad if we're not born of God. Okay. It's really that simple. And uh, again, this is this is very simple stuff. That's all I can really say. But I, I appreciate. Uh, the challenge here third choice stay here and work uh, you're, where are you getting that from because the word labor second choice to go with be with Jesus without his body where are you getting that from be absent from the body first choice come Lord Jesus and give me a new body so that I never have to be bodiless where are you getting bodiless from I'm not seeing that anywhere okay so I'll, I <laughs> this stuff here where, where are you getting this from that's not from the Bible this third choice second choice first choice that's not there it's not there. Again, this is about the difference between the flesh and the spirit. And I, I was going to go over and show you multiple verses that you can connect the dots and see clearly. This is what he speaks of over and over again. It's what Jesus speaks of over and over and John and Peter I mean it's overwhelming well, the more you read it the more you see it there's a difference between the Spirit of God and the flesh there's a difference between the flesh and the spirit and this is just the same thing all right so hopefully uh, are you born of God are you born of God? If you are, then the Holy Spirit is in you. And it ought to be convicting you to see this right now. Because that's the truth. And Jesus says he will bring all things into remembrance. He will bring us the Comforter. And the Comforter will guide us to all truth. Okay? So... Forget about what men have taught you. And I have to do the same thing. It's not just you. It's all of us. We are polluted with false teachers. Alright? But what does the Word of God actually say? Alright? And so I want to encourage you. To believe. The words of God. And challenge the words of men. Alright. So for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. Okay. We have a building of God. And house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. 
not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. This tabernacle, all right? So, uh, again, I mean, this, there's all kinds of, of um, directions we can go here. Jesus destroyed this tabernacle, or this temple, this body. He destroyed it. And in three days, brought it back up. Rose it back up. Raised it back up. Okay? And he has built a better tabernacle. A better temple. A better body. An immortal body. Alright, so when he comes back in the clouds of heaven, we will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. We will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. See, this is the same thing that's taught all throughout the Bible. The same thing. All right, just because it says tabernacle, or just because it says body, it, it all means the same thing. It doesn't mean two different things. It means it's talking about the flesh, this flesh, this body of death that we're in. Right? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's not a different thing. It's the same thing. Now he that has wrought us for the self same thing as God who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousnesses. consciousnesses. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that he may, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead then we're all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling 
the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we, may, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, it's a great chapter. Fantastic chapter. I love this conversation. But it's my opinion when you read the whole thing, you're not going to come away with this idea that it's better to be dead. You're not getting that from this chapter. You're not getting it from any chapter, any verse, anywhere in the Bible in regards to those of us that are saved. We want life. We do not want death.